Hey everyone, it's Haley here, also known as Gabrielle for the folks on Facebook. And today we have a fun little lesson here. Um, it is a going to be about revival, specifically revival in the 18th century in Europe, uh, which really catapulted lots of other nations, including the United States. So it's really exciting. Um, and revival has quite an impact on uh, entire nations, really. It, you know, usually it starts in a little town and then it spreads. So that's really cool. And as you guys know, in scripture, Jesus tells us to pray that his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's what we pray for. And so when we see revival, it is super exciting. So we'll just kind of start off with like a short sentence or two on what revival is. So it's usually seen as an increase in zeal for the Lord, for Jesus and his kingdom. So we'll see a lot of, uh, you know, like a spike in meetings, a spike in maybe 24-7 prayer. I know a lot of people do that, a lot of churches. Or um, gatherings, you know, a lot of times we'll see worship music being played. I know we just had coming off of like the Asbury Revival a few months ago. So that was really cool. And so this is just kind of an encouragement to everyone to pray for revival and be the revival because it does start with one person or a couple people or as we'll see it, it starts with a small group and then it just spreads like wildfire because the Holy Spirit, as we know, is known um, symbolically as fire in the scripture. So we want to spread that fire. So I'll start you guys off. Um, we'll be in the 18th century, like I said, in Europe. So I'll just kind of start here. Um, so a revival, it says, broke out on the continent of Europe in Germany, known as the Pietistic Revival. Its leaders were Philip Spiner, a theologian and professor, and August Frank, a pastor in the same city as the university. Their emphasis was not only on justification that Martin Luther, who we covered in another video, had emphasized two centuries earlier at the outbreak of the Protestant Reformation, they gave special attention to sanctification, emphasizing not just believing correct doctrine, but also experiencing the Holy Spirit and living uh, sanctification. Like, you, you know, when we're talking about being sanctified, we talk about living a very holy and pure lifestyle, abstaining from the lusts of the flesh, abstaining from all sin, even down to um, abstaining from evil thoughts. So that's that's what they were focusing on here. And revival uh, a lot of times does bring that reminder of pure and holy conduct onto people. So that's exactly what happened here. It says in this 18th century revival, they also stressed the importance of knowing we have genuine faith that results in the new birth. Okay, so we can, it says a young man named Count Ludwig von Zizendorf, what a name, who went to university and attended Frank's church would later lead a great revival movement himself. He would become the leader of the Hernot community or the Moravians. So a lot of you maybe have heard of the Moravians. If you have not, you can look them up. There's a lot of resources about them. It said, um, okay. The, this revival broke out. So this is kind of one of the key points that I wanted to get to. So this revival with the Moravians broke out at midnight during the Lord's Supper and the 24 seven prayer meeting that began at that time would continue for a hundred years. Wow, that's amazing. So we see that they were very dedicated. So the fact that they were still having a church service and still doing communion uh, at midnight shows that they did not just meet once a week for like an hour or two on, you know, Sunday and then went home to watch a football game. You know, that's not what happened. They were dedicated and they were praying probably hours a day, uh, really in the word of God. So that's what it takes. We want to be constantly in the word of God. We see that they had a 24 seven prayer house. That is super amazing. Um, just a little personal aside here, which is really cool about the 24 seven prayer. My husband's grandparents, um, they had a house fire and my husband's grandma, she was severely burned and they didn't know if she was going to make it. Uh, she was very young and so they didn't know if she was going to make it. And they at their church started a 24-7 prayer.
prayer time for her. So every person in the congregation would take like a half an hour to pray. And within a couple days, she had made such amazing strides and she was sent home from the hospital and she went on to have five kids. And obviously my husband uh, is her grandson. So that's just super cool. So that is like a personal testimony to the power of prayer and specifically this 24 seven prayer time. So um, I would just encourage all of you to get involved in some sort of prayer, like locally, get involved in a church, uh, a lot of you see this from uh, the Facebook groups. So even if you want to get involved with prayer, let me know. Contact us. There's lots of ways you can do that. But I just encourage all of you to get involved because prayers are powerful. Prayers are powerful. So so keep praying and do it as a habit every day. Okay, so we'll continue on with the revival. So it said, in addition to the emphasis of the pietists, this movement would be known for its missionary enterprise. They would send out more missionaries in 25 years than all the Protestants of the world had sent out during the preceding 200 years of Protestantism. This is incredible when you realize this community was never over 300 people at Zizendorf's estate. So let me just recap maximum 300 parishioners okay uh sent out more missionaries in 25 years than all of the protestants had in the past 200 years that's amazing that's what the 24 7 prayer does that's what total dedication to the lord does it transforms lives it, and then once you send people out uh, into the mission field, it literally transforms nations. We're talking hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people, generation after generation after generation. This is what we're looking for, revival. It says, the Moravians would have a powerful impact upon our next revival, the great evangelical revival in England under John Wesley and George Whitfield. You guys know we kind of covered John Wesley in a previous video. But so this revival had a lot to do with John Wesley's revival then. See how they just spur each other on? And it's very important to have good examples of people, uh, Christians that went before you to to look up to and, and to be able to um, learn from them, learn from the things that worked and maybe learn from the things that didn't work. And we can, we're always working together and learning and growing as the body of Christ. So it says, Wesley experienced his conversion at a Moravian meeting on Aldersgate Street. He and Whitfield were filled with the Holy Spirit around 3 a.m. during an observance meeting of the Lord's Supper. Okay, so again, we see that they did not just meet each other for a half an hour, an hour, and then go home. This These meetings lasted for hours and hours. So they were not at home watching movies or playing video games or doing whatever they were worshiping god they were longing to know god more and more so again this is what it's going to take in america in all over the world we need to rededicate ourselves to god so yeah i mean it i'll just kind of recap here it says though wesley and whitfield were two of the greatest evangelists of this revival um the ministry of john fletcher brought about a theological change so there are lots again we the main point of this is to see that there's a couple pioneers who really start the revival and then more and more and more people come and there's more change and more growth and just so this is really just a video or a video to encourage everyone and to spur each other on to be the revival